everyone, Christina here, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your very own gift tags using your own tech laser. There are a few different options, and you can customize them as you so choose. I will also be showing you how you can add your own text and make your own names. So yeah, stay tuned, and let's get started. When you download the file from the OMTech website, it should import looking like this. As you can see, I already have some things assigned. It, by default, correlates with the things that I have set up in my library, so you are going to need to make some adjustments based on the settings that you have on your computer. But as a quick rundown, as you can see, the top of the file has an area that says editable tags, and that is just the plain outline. You can add your own text, mix and match, do whatever you like there. The ready to go is just kind of showing you how it should be layering on top of each other. And the layer breakdowns go over what elements go on the top layer and what elements go on the bottom layer. And if you want to add your own names or your own words and really customize these, here are some tips and tricks that I've learned that might be able to help you. So I'm coming over here to the A and I'm going to be typing in a name. There we go, we have our name there. And I'm going to be zooming in a little bit here, just so I can show you how it's going to look. So once I have my name, you can come up here and you see font. Pick a font of your choosing. Now I tend to prefer fonts that kind of flow together, as we can see here. These are almost connected, not quite. But in that case, what I am going to do... I'm going to convert it to a path, so it's actually going to be turning the font into its own element. Be warned if you click this, because you will not be able to go back and adjust the word again. You will have to retype it. I go ahead and I like to do this, and then I merge it together because I like it as one word. It's just easier to cut. It's just easier to work with for me versus putting, you know, all these separate letters on. And because this is a thinner font, I am going to bump up an offset just so it's not as thin. And once I am happy with that, I'm going to be adding it to one of the tag designs. There we go. Make sure that I'm on the right layer here. And then once I have the proper placement, I'm just going to go ahead and click this button. I should probably tell you the name of this button. So I guess in Lightburn, it's actually called Union. And then Merge is actually Weld. I'm just so used to <laughs> illustrator terms. So once I have that how I like it, I'm going to go ahead and add my little hang tab. And the reason why I didn't include the hang tabs in this particular um, element is because some people actually like to add the tabs inside of it, which is fine. So you can really customize them as you see fit. I am going to load up my material. I already have my bottom layer set up right here. And this is going to be cutting out of 532 walnut that I got from Home Depot. And I like to often place my elements as close together as I can to avoid any waste of space. And then all I'm going to do is frame it, make sure that it's in the right location on my machine. Awesome, looking good. And then I'm going to send it to my laser to cut. And now for the top layer. The top layer is going to be using 1 8 inch Baltic birch. And this was already spray painted white and then masked. And in addition to it, because I did test this project out prior to <laughs> filming, is I did actually have an issue with the Merry Christmas text because it was a little bit too thin. So I'm just going to quickly show you how, if you ever face this situation, how you can actually bump up the text and kind of fix it. Now in order to fix this, what I do in this situation is I come over here and create an offset. And I'm just going to offset it a little bit. And then I'm going to go in and delete the innermost layer. And that's going to leave us with a bumped up area of text. And see, it's already looking a lot better. But there are some kind of weird areas because of the offset that we're going to have to go in and fix. And in that situation, I'm just going to ungroup it. 
and I'm gonna slightly adjust these little elements to make it a little bit more legible. And every font and every word is going to look different. So again, you can just eye it, whatever looks best to you. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna actually click this union button and this is going to bring it all together. And then once I'm happy with all of that, I'm going to be sending the job to my machine and just proceeding to do the same thing that I did in the former step. Now, just to keep in mind, I did already have this recorded prior, but the Merry Christmas in this part is actually incorrect. And I will be showing you what happens if you cut something too small. And another thing that I forgot to mention is always make sure if you have like little dots in your eyes that you check your area below your machine. And sometimes it can be a little bit hard to fish it out. So I always recommend keeping a clean under bottom of your machine. So it makes it a little bit easier. Here we have all of our pieces and I do mask my wood just because I don't like the char on it. In order to remove the masking, you just simply pull it back or you can use one of these little scraper tools. Because there's so many fine details in these, I'm probably not gonna be really using the scraper tool it, just because I'm known to break things. So I'm just gonna be peeling it with my finger. And as you're peeling it, if you notice you have some char where the masking didn't adhere correctly, you can just use a magic eraser with a little bit of water and scrub it off. And it looks awesome. And for this Merry Christmas text, as you can see, it is very, very wobbly. The area in the back is so thin, it pretty much broke off from the side. And when you peel it, this can happen. So again, I always recommend testing out your fonts, testing out your designs. Worst case scenario, just add an offset and you can bump it up. And then for gluing, I'm just using this Gorilla Glue Gel and I'm adding little dots to my elements. If it gobs on a little too thick, I'm just gonna gently kind of dab it on the paper towel and then stick it to the bottom layer. Looks like I did forget the eye here, so I'm gonna have to go back and find that one and fish that out of the abyss of my machine. I'm gonna be covering the tags with a paper towel, and I'm gonna be placing a marble cutting board that I have on top just to, just to adhere the layers better to each other. For the string of the ornament, I actually have some of this twine that I've just had lying around. To feed it through the ornament, I'm just gonna be feeding both ends and then I'm gonna be pulling those two ends through the loop. Another option, if you're struggling getting your twine or your string through the top of the hole, is you can actually add tape to the tip and just kind of stick them together and it just makes it easier so it doesn't fray. I'm gonna be making my own little bow that I'm just gonna be wrapping around my two fingers like this and just feeding it through. And then I'm gonna be pulling it tight. And there are various videos online that can help you do this. It took me quite a while to get this down. And then I'm just gonna kind of trim it a little bit. Then to adhere the little bow to my tag, I'm gonna just be using some hot glue and sticking it on and just holding it down for about 20 seconds. And you can customize these tags however you choose. You can add beads, you can leave it without beads, you can tie it a different way. They can be used as ornaments, they could be used as gift tags, they can be used as stocking tags. Many, many different uses for these. I hope that you have learned a lot during this tutorial and remember to download the files from the OMTech website. Thank you for watching. Have yourself an awesome day.